could hold on I could hold on to who I am and never let you change me from the inside I could be safe oh, I could be safe here in your arms and never leave never let these walls down you have called me higher you have called me deeper and I'll go I could hold on, I could hold on to who I am and never let you change me from the inside. I could be safe, oh, I could be safe here in your arms and never leave, never let these walls down. You have called me higher, you have called me deeper, and I'll go in. be seated, and at this time, I would like to welcome uh, Steve up for our children's sermon today. I put emphasis on Steve because I called him by the wrong name earlier, and I'm making it up to him. I'd like to invite all the children to come down for the children's message. Good morning. How are y'all? So, I got a question. What's the hardest thing that you've ever had to do? Something that was hard to do, you weren't sure if you were going to be able to finish it, it was going to take a long time. Somebody said math in the background. Have you ever done something really hard and you think, wow, I don't know if I can do this. What you got? Huh? Graft. Yeah, and those are hard. Well, as a, as a for instance, 
one time I was hiking with my friends and we were in the Grand Canyon. We drove in all the way out to Arizona and we were hiking in the Grand Canyon and we went to the farthest place that they'll let you go and like come back in the same day. We couldn't stay overnight in the park, but it was really far. You were six miles down the side of the canyon and all the way out to this point and you could overlook the, the river there. But then you had to walk six miles back. And when we turned and we were headed back, I twisted my knee. And I was thinking, oh, this, this is not going to be good. But fortunately, some of my friends were like physical therapy students. And so they got me all wrapped up and bandaged up. And we worked our way out. But when you get to the edge of the Grand Canyon, y'all have seen pictures of, or been to the Grand Canyon, right? It's like sheer cliff the last quarter mile or so is almost like climbing stairs straight up. And I didn't know if I was going to make it. But I didn't really have an option to not make it because, you know, you couldn't like live there or anything. And they didn't really have an option to come and get me out of there. And so I kind of had to make it. But I didn't know if I could. And I kept going and I kept going and my knee was hurting and we shuffled stuff around, but I finally got to the top, and it was such a great feeling to get to the top and feel the breeze, and, you know, it was hot and tired and dusty and, and everything, but I had done it. I had made it as far as you could go and made it back, and even with a little bit of a, you know, problem, I had still accomplished it, okay? Felt pretty good. We ate some campside, campfire spaghetti. It was the best spaghetti I have ever eaten in my life. There's nothing like food after a long hike like that because it's going to taste the best. But today we're going to hear a story about Jesus and his time spent in the wilderness. And he wasn't just gone for one day. He was in the wilderness for 40 days. And he didn't have his friends with him. He went all by himself, which is not something that we recommend. You should always take a hiking buddy. But Jesus was there by himself, but he wasn't really alone, was he? He had the angels with him, and he had God with him, right? So even when we're trying to do something that's really hard, we're not sure if we can do it, but we got to do it. we got to keep trying. we got to keep going. Always remember that God is with you, and he'll be there for you. Okay? All right. Let's say a prayer together. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for always being with us. Even when things are hard, you help us see it through. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So as the kids are getting their bags, I would like to uh, invite you to uh, greet your neighbors and uh, share the love of Christ uh, with one another this morning. Welcome to worship as you're greeting each other and, and offering uh, your hand fellowship. 
I want to welcome those who are worshiping with us uh, online uh, to welcome you to worship First Methodist. I'm Reverend Justin Ledbetter. It's my joy to serve as pastor, uh, senior pastor in the life of the church. We begin our, our Lenten journey this morning, uh, taking us from the, the mountaintop of the Transfiguration last Sunday uh, to be whisked into the wilderness this Sunday morning. You'll notice our, our altar table uh, today is, is set in, in colors of gray and, and purple as we think of a time of, of reflection and repentance uh, and reverence as we think of the life and teachings of Jesus the Christ. We'll continue in, in our reading from Mark's Gospel this morning in the first chapter. Again, we'll read from from Mark 1, uh, as we have throughout so many weeks of this year, verse by verse and line by line and word by word, we, we turn back to a passage uh, earlier in the chapter this morning, beginning at verse 9. We'll read again of Jesus' baptism as we did uh, in the first Sunday of the year. We'll return to that place for a moment and to remember uh, the baptism of Jesus, and soon then, the way that he was whisked into the wilderness uh, with his hair even still wet from the waters of the Jordan, and where he was tempted and tried, but sinned not. And so if you've got your Bibles, I'll invite you again to turn with me to Mark 1. Uh, we'll read Mark 1, 9 through, uh, through 15. Uh, some other passages just to keep in mind. This is a brief passage describing Jesus' time in the wilderness. Other gospel writers uh, record this time of trial as well. Um, in more depth, you can read about it in Luke, the fourth chapter. In Luke 4, if you want to check that out later, you can see each of the temptations of Jesus, tempted uh, by his hunger and, and thirst in the wilderness, tempted by the devil to make uh, bread of the stones. Uh, taken to a, to a high place, taken uh, to the top uh, of the synagogue, uh, tempted in fears and, and tempted with pride, tempted, tempted, and, and tempted. Um, another place maybe to, to check out and to take a look around uh, as we enter into the wilderness is to remember the story of the children of Israel and, and their time in the wilderness. And, if you want to make a mark in your Bible for later, you can read about that in Exodus in the 13th chapter and onward of, of the journey of the children of Israel who crossed the sea of the Jordan but were led by God through the wilderness for some 40 years uh, in a time of preparation and in the growing of character and courage in the wilderness. Uh, and so we begin again at Mark 1 and 9. And let us uh, prepare our hearts, if you would, to bow uh, your heads with me. God, we give you thanks for your word and its hearing. Heavenly Father, we know that, that your word tells us that, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so give us ears to hear what you would say to each of us. Uh, give us eyes to see, uh, God, where you are at work in our lives and around each of us. And, and God, give us the courage and the will to do what you would have us to do and to become uh, the men and women, the people of faith that you would have us uh, to be. For we pray in your name, Jesus, and by your Spirit we say, Amen. And so we jump back into the story at verse 9. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven saying, You are my Son whom I love, and with you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness 40 days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and the angels attended to him. And after John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to jump right in and begin in this thought at once. The Spirit 
sent him out into the wilderness. You may wonder, now why would God do such a thing as this, right? Jesus has just had a big day with his cousin John in the Jordan River. He's doing what he needs to do. He's being who he's called to be. A glorious moment is beheld by all who were there. The Holy Spirit of God appears as a dove, and the voice of heaven says, You are my son, and you are my beloved, and you I am pleased. And the Bible is clear that at once the Spirit of God sent him out into the wilderness, into the wilderness. Sometimes I think in our lives, maybe we're guilty of wanting it uh, right here and right now and at once. I mean, I don't know about you, but even when I was a kid, if I could have looked at my own resume, I might have said, he's the one, right? I'm going to just go ahead and, and put him in the temple and over thousands, and they'll just all hang on my word, right? I think if we're really honest, maybe many of us would just skip ourselves right to the front of the line, it's easy to, to want to do that. I know that when I was in uh, grade school, you know, and it was time for like lunch or recess, I'd want to be out of that desk. I started studying the clock and thought it's fixing to be that time. I'd say, get back in your desk. We haven't lined up just yet. The Bible is clear that the Spirit of God sent Jesus into the wilderness. The same Spirit who led the children of Israel into the wilderness for some 40 days. The same spirit by which Noah spent 40 days in the storms. The same wilderness, make note that, that David, the boy, wandered in the wilderness carrying over sheep and keeping them from wolves and preparing his heart and his head and his soul for the kind of courage that it would take to be a warrior and even a king. It happened, you see, when God had David being prepared in the wilderness. Other people may even have been at school learning about swords and shields and battle, as his older brothers probably were. But no, David was in the, say it, come on church, wilderness, you've almost got it. You've almost got it. It's in the wilderness. It's in the wilderness where character is formed, you see. It's in the wilderness where courage is made. It's in the wilderness where our faith is proven to be greater than our fear. It's in the wilderness where we're discovered that, that we're more loved than we ever really knew and that we're never truly alone. It's in the wilderness that we experience these things. Not just by clicking and watching some YouTube videos, fun as that is. It's by time and trial in the wilderness. The wilderness, you see, takes a few things out of you, but the wilderness makes something out of you as well. The wilderness is not any place where we really want to be, if we're honest. I don't know anybody who signs up to want to be in the wilderness. Nobody says, you know, I want to end up in divorce court. Nobody says, I, I hope that I get pulled over today and try to talk myself out of another fast one. You see, the wilderness can be anywhere. Not just in the high deserts of, of the western United States. There's a lot of wilderness there in the high deserts. There's some places so hot and so dry uh, that you just can't stand it. A few summers ago, we went to visit the Great Sand Dunes uh, National Park. Has anybody been there in, in southern Colorado? I, I can tell you that the sand is so hot, it's like lava. I remember thinking, I'm going to take off my sandals for a minute and see how far I can go, and it wasn't very far. At some point, I remember my teenage daughter jumping on my back, piggyback style, and, and walking her through this wilderness. The wilderness is hot. The wilderness is dry. The wilderness is, is yucky and dusty. It makes you hungry, even if you're as uh, strong and prepared as Steve Payton. Did you hear that? Super Steve Payton, our Super Scout leader, was once even in the wilderness, and even Super Steve almost thought about giving up on his way to the rim of the Grand Canyon. Thank you, Steve, for your willing witness this morning about climbing and overcoming the obstacles of our wilderness. The wilderness is not anywhere that you want to be when somebody tells you you're grounded and, and you're sent into the wilderness, you see? And yet, God has a purpose in all of our lives, make no mistake, God appointed and God divine times of wilderness. Wilderness. 
I can tell you that you've got a, a good speaker this morning, truly, on this topic and over the next several weeks as we enter into the season of Lent. If you were to call my parents, in fact, I'm sure without prompt they would testify, my Lord, that boy has spent some time in the wilderness. Some of his own making, some of not. Sometimes we wondered, is he ever going to get to the other side of the wilderness? I'll tell you, I've been in the wilderness so many times, I can be your tour guide. Jesus was at once, the Bible says, sent into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness for 40 days, and he was tempted by Satan. We know that St. Luke tells us about the ways that the devil tried to tempt him, saying, turn this stone to bread. In chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, and Jesus answered, it is written, he answered him, see, with the word of God, saying, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He relied on Scripture and the wisdom of its teaching in moments when he was tempted and tried and found God's word to be true. The devil took him up to a high place, says St. Luke, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and said to him, I will give you splendor if you will worship me. And Jesus answered again saying, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him in his wilderness to Jerusalem and to the highest point of the temple and tempted him to throw himself down saying, command these angels to guard you and to lift you up that your foot would not strike the stone. And Jesus said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. He was tempted and tried in the wilderness, but he sinned not. The wilderness is no place to be, it seems. The wilderness is no place to, to pitch a tent or to pull up your big camper and to make marshmallows and decide to stay for very long. The wilderness is a place for going through, for getting by, and for carrying on. The wilderness, you see, is a place that is meant to make us better than we already are or even realize that we could be. That the wilderness reveals to us the strength of our character and our conviction. And the Bible is clear that, that Jesus, as He left the wilderness, that He immediately went on to Galilee and to proclaiming of the good news. Uh, Luke tells it uh, a little differently, saying in verse 14, Jesus returned to Galilee, I love this phrase, in the power of the Spirit, and news about Him began to spread through the whole countryside. Amen? There's something about about going through. There's something about going through and getting on to the other side that empowers you. There's something unmistakable and unavoidable and incredible that happens in facing the things that we face and in, and in seeing God do the things that only God can do. The wilderness is a place where you don't want to be for longer than you have to, but the wilderness is a place, thank God, where God is with us and for us and works in us and through us and maybe in moments even in spite of us to strengthen us, to deliver us, and to restore us. I have a friend who just a couple of weeks ago lost his faithful wife of many years, and he is desperately in the wilderness. saying uh, he's not sure even uh, that he knows how he's going to go on. Just the other day, he referenced a statistic about the number of people that die within six months or a year of when their beloved dies. You see, my friend found himself rather quickly at a bedside and a graveside in the wilderness of his grief. The wilderness can be anywhere. The wilderness can appear as, as quickly and unannounced as your high school transcript or the semester test. It can appear that quickly you are in the wilderness uh, of algebra. Trust me, as your tour guide, the wilderness can be anywhere. Wilderness can come to anyone. 
Jesus was whisked, the Bible says, into the wilderness by the Spirit of God. David, the boy who would be king, spent so many nights looking into and beyond the stars when God formed his heart in the wilderness. The children of Israel who had left the, the hand of Pharaoh, who'd left the whip and the stone behind, wandered through the wilderness through hunger and sickness for 40 years in the wilderness. I've often wondered about their wilderness. Some of it I know about, the way that they grumbled and got tired of quail and taters along the way. Quail and crackers, I should have said. But I've wondered at times about the, their wilderness, about the adolescence of their wilderness when they said, there's nothing to do here. It's so boring in the wilderness about the way that they got tired of eating the same old things, of doing the same old things. I've, I've wondered about those who were, who were old in faith and long in the tooth and gray in hair and, and the way maybe that they just wanted to get to the other side. Saying, Lord, I, I don't want to do it anymore. Take me now. Maybe about those in the middle of their life who, who discovered in that wilderness about some of the things of their youth that just weren't so in the real world of the wilderness as we do too. Somewhere with that degree and that first job or two or three, a promotion and then passed over a time and again. And, and in their wilderness, they, they thought that they should be more than what they are or where they are in their wilderness about the strain of, of marriage too. A year and two and five and ten and seasons of expectation and adolescent children and then the empty nest. And in the wilderness of, of love, how two people make their relationship new again. About those who said goodbye to their lovers through divorce and, and death and found themselves looking into the gray sky of a wilderness. And I wonder perhaps for a moment as we enter into this season of wilderness, as we, as we live in a, in a country that today is so spiritually bankrupt, caught up in evil and violence, and economic depression and spiritual depression, about the remnant that is God's church and the faithful steps that she takes into the wilderness. Despite the way that so many of, of our neighbors speak of her as if she's irrelevant, something of a time gone by and unneeded in the internet world of today. But make no mistake that it is the people of faith who gather and and glean of the food of the earth to give to their neighbors and backpacks to hundreds of children every week. Make no mistake that it is the church who gathers in the wilderness and takes the hands of those who are sick and dying, the widow and the widower, of those who worry over their children and grandchildren in the wilderness of their teenage adolescence of their struggle and strife and addiction to substances. And so into the wilderness we go once more. Knowing that there are things that we will fast from and that we will leave behind. That in the next faithful step of our living in our lives, of our households and our community, of the place where God has seemed to call us from our own baptisms to our own wilderness that we will develop the character that God wishes to grow in us that we will find some measure of courage that perhaps we didn't even know that we had and that maybe in lonely and tearful moments in seasons of loss and fear and worry along our wilderness way, 
we will find that God has overcome. For He said to the world, you will have trouble in this life. But fear not, for I have overcome the world. God, you see, is an overcomer. And He has overcome the devil and even the grave and death itself. And that God, the great overcomer, will one day call us to do even just the same. To cross that great river beyond the crystal sea. I want you to, to know that the wilderness is hard. Tell your neighbor, nudge somebody and tell them it's almost time to go. The wilderness is hard. Just go ahead and tell them. Don't sugarcoat it. The wilderness is hard, girl. The wilderness is hard, dude. The wilderness is hard, son. The wilderness is hard, daughter. Mama, the wilderness is going to be hard now that Daddy's not here anymore. The wilderness is hard. But I want you also to tell your neighbor that God is with us. Amen? That God is with us. That we are not alone and that He has overcome. So welcome the wilderness into your life. There is a purpose in God's presence working in you and through you. In delivering you and in directing you and guiding you and uplifting you in this season in your life. This season. And that one day this season of wilderness in your life. I know I'm preaching to somebody today. I'm preaching to somebody this week who's going to get this word later. And receive it, friend. Receive it. That one day the wilderness that you were in, the wilderness in between jobs or relationships, that this wilderness is just going to be some place where you've been. Another postcard on your wall. Another notch in your belt. Another mark on your list. Something else that you, with God's help, have overcome. May we pray? God, we know that, that you called even Jesus into the wilderness. He didn't go from the baptism to the boardroom, but into the wilderness where he was tempted and tried and, and sinned not. We know, God, that, that Noah stood through the storms for some 40 days, that the children of Israel lingered for 40 years. That David found courage to kill giants at first in his lonely wilderness. That John the Baptist, too, called others to a life of faith in the wilderness. And Lord, that you call us, even here and now, in this day and age and time, to the timeless treasure that is your word to the amazing presence that can only be found in and through prayer, and to the miraculous and incredible thing that happens in our lives, that the more that we give away, the more that we have of you. And so God, even as we prepare to give this day of, of prayers, of letting go of some things, as we prepare to, to give and share an offering and a prayer for ourselves or someone else, God, hear us as we pray together the prayer which you teach us to live every day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Passes, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy kingdom, power, glory. Amen. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. 
worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Jesus the name above every other name us the only one who could ever say worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you oh we live for you yeah and holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes and Fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead your love to those around me. So next week, our worship service is a one-service Sunday in the sanctuary at 10 o'clock. So I want everybody to be made aware of that so you're not surprised. You would be early. The next people would be late. 
So you've got that going for you. But 10 o'clock next week, it'll be uh, in the email and things to help you remember. Uh, it is Scout Sunday. So come and support the Scouts that are here at our church. Um, 10 o'clock next week. And the following week is also the first Sunday of uh, March. Time is passing. And we um, will have communion, and that'll be a one-service Sunday as well. And I think Leslie has a, an announcement to make. Yes, um, I just wanted to say that we had our first Women of Faith meeting this last week. And we discussed lots of things. If any of you ladies would like to plug in, just um, holler at me or anybody. We, we, there was a lot of us there. And with that, if you'll notice in the lobby, um, my very, very, very good friend, um, Velma Hobbs, has agreed to do Easter art for us, uh, similar to the Christmas things that we sold. And 100% um, of the proceeds will go to the new women's ministry. So take a look at her beautiful stuff that she does free-handed. Um, she's just got, she's got some talent. So you ladies and men, um, look at the beautiful Easter things she has to offer. Thanks. So if you would please stand and join us as we sing our last song this morning. All throughout my history, your faithfulness has walked beside me. Winter storms made way for spring, and every season, from where I'm standing, I see evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. Help me remember when I'm May come, but fear will leave. You lead my heart to victory. You are my strength, and you always will be. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life. All over my life, I see your promises in fulfillment. All over my life, all over my life, see the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless. All my sin rolled away because of you, oh Jesus. See the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless. All my sin rolled away because of you, oh Jesus. Oh, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. Fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. Yeah. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment. All over my life, all over my life. Why should I fear? The evidence is here. Why should I fear? Oh, the 
evidence is here. It's in the wilderness sometimes that history is made in the things that we overcome. Here's to you and to your wilderness, my friend. To the things that you face, to the, to the things that you do, to the courage and the character that you find and you form deep inside of yourself. And as you get ready to go about your day and the rest of your week, to the places you go and the company that you keep, know that the journey through your wilderness requires the next faithful step. And so as they say, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. We're out. Amen, amen, and amen.